Hello everyone and welcome to Lost in the Episode. Today I'm going to be going over the new Peacock original series, The Lost Symbol, based upon the Dan Brown novel. This franchise that originally started with Tom Hanks and spawned three theatrical films is headed to our television screens. Is there still an audience for this series and does it improve upon the last couple of films? Let's talk about it. The Lost Symbol is executive produced by Ron Howard and Brian Grazer. It stars Ashley Zuckerman, Valerie Curry, Rick Gonzalez, Bo Knapp, Sumali Montano, and Eddie Izzard. This series follows the early adventures of Robert Langdon, who finds himself pulled into a series of deadly puzzles when his mentor is kidnapped. The CIA forces him into a task force when he uncovers a chilling conspiracy. Let's start off this review by saying that I have never read any of Dan Brown's novels following Robert Langdon. I was first introduced to the character when Tom Hanks suited up to play him in the wildly successful The Da Vinci Code. Although that movie definitely has its flaws, I still think it is a ridiculously entertaining roller coaster ride full of conspiracies, puzzle solving, and adventure. As someone who grew up on National Treasure, I am a sucker for this shit. Unfortunately, Ron Howard's next two installments, Angels and Demons and Inferno, left much to be desired. As the films dwindled in their box office receipts, it seemed like this franchise was doomed to be over. But now, Grazer and Howard have moved this franchise into the television format for a pseudo-prequel series based on another of Brown's books. And while the idea was a sound one, the lost symbol suffers from many of the issues that the films did. While the puzzle solving and wild goose chases are interesting, this character and the world around him fails to be captivating. Particularly when I watched Angels and Demons and Inferno, I couldn't help but think that the filmmakers had somehow made the legendary Tom Hanks lack any sort of charisma. And unfortunately for Ashley Zuckerman, who just showed up as Nick Good in the Fear Street films, is no match for Robert Langdon's droll and zestless approach as well. The actor flounders in many scenes, mostly due to the overly complicated and silly dialogue. Many of the other performers also fail to impress, making for a bit of a lackluster ensemble as a whole. But the one saving grace for this series is the reason why we watch these stories to begin with. The mystery and the intrigue. Although I do think there are so many puzzles to solve that it just doesn't make much sense. Anytime a new artifact was found or a new clue needed to be solved, I found myself invested again. There's also a brilliant action scene in the first episode involving being closed in to an ancient room by moving walls, which I found pretty exhilarating. The villain in the series also has enough unique attributes about him that I am curious as to what his motivations are. Unfortunately, the lost symbol after three episodes just hasn't found its groove yet, and I feel that for a series like this to succeed, the showrunners needed to hook us by the pilot episode. After three, I'm struggling to find many reasons to keep watching. Although the puzzle solving is fun, you can only do it so much until it becomes tiring. The lead character of Robert Langdon just lacks any sort of gravitas to make you care about what comes next for him. I do think fans of this type of historical and religious mystery solving might get a kick out of it, but I just don't think the showrunners have proven so far why this franchise needed to continue at all. So I will be giving the first three episodes of Peacock's The Lost Symbol 2.25 severed hands out of 5. Despite some intriguing mysteries and puzzle solving, this new series fails to keep the audience engaged due to clunky dialogue and an overall uninteresting cast of characters. Thank you so much for watching Lost in the Episode. We will see you soon.